Hello and welcome to this first part in a series called Banking APIs. We're going to create an API today for customers and customer onboarding. First thing we do is create the data services project. And we do that using a Design Studio templates project. Once you've chosen the templates that you want, the Iris project, you can enter some names. So you can, let's call this one Prospect. And all the other fields look fine. And we'll click finish. So, what this will do now is create a set of projects ready for our data services for our prospect API. This example project contains a few sample inquiries. We're going to import one extra version for creating customers. So, I go File, Import, Design Studio Screen, and I'll connect to my local server. This goes and fetches a list of all the versions, and I can simply search for the one that I want. So create, it's a screen name, and I want to create the customer. I click next, and I'm going to import it into this inquiry folder to begin with. Okay, that's not very well organized. So if I create a folder called version, I'll be able to find my versions a bit easier. Okay, folder version, and I'll move it into that folder. These can live anywhere, these inquiries and versions. All right, that's done now. You can see there's actually a problem with it. There's an X on the um, screen that I've imported. If I look at the source view, it highlights what those problems are. This is a very basic problem. Essentially, there are some related versions that aren't included. Well, I haven't imported yet, so I'm just going to comment those out. Right, should be able to generate code now without errors. That's good. What we do at this step when we create our services, we need to generate a rim. So we're going to build up a, a view of the world in here that uh, is going to be our service. So if I enable the rim generation, Design Studio code generation. I want to generate these rims. So click OK. Now, if I right click on the version and generate, generate code, you can see it's generated a version. Again, there are a couple of minor errors in here that we need to sort out. These are generated resources that we will use later. But for now, I'll just comment those out. It says it's a, in a generated folder, and did I want to modify it? I said yes. So what I'll do is I'll move it out of the generated directory, just so that we keep those changes. Right, that's that part done. I've now generated the version. All I need to do now to have a, a valid OData service is add it to my service document. So you can see here we have quite a lot of control over how to generate and how to construct the services. The OData services require this service document and require a metadata resource. So this few services here has created a valid OData service. We can now build our project and have a look at the service document and the metadata. To build the project, I'm going to run the package launcher here, right click, debug as package. And when that's complete, I'll be able to deploy the service and, and see it running. Okay, so once that build is finished, there'll be a nice WAR file sitting in the target directory here. You can actually copy that directly from here to JBoss. You can go copy, go to JBoss, the deploy directory deployments here and just paste it. You'll see the, the web service starting to get busy deploying that file and when you see this dot graph here for the metadata you'll know it's deployed. So if we go to our web browser now type in the address of the new service which will be prospect dash virus Oh, wrong port. 
So change that to uh, the correct port. It says there's no service there, so I need to type in prospect.svc slash uh, company. All this will become clear. Okay, so this is the service document in the HTML media type view. The HTML media type response. If I switch to a REST client like Postman, I can take that same URL, put it into Postman, and if I look at the headers, I can see what I'm going to request, the content type, so let's remove those. I can request, and here's the XML view. So you can actually see that it's returned by default with an Atom SVC XML media type. If I look at the other part that's critical to OData, the metadata, what do we get? You can see there's this XML schema that describes all the types for all the entities in that service. So that's good, and whilst that's good for um, OData, it allows things like Excel to be able to get data, so I can put data straight into Excel. So same link, just give it a username and password. One, two, six. It connects. I'll bring in the customers directly to save that information and put it in a table. Why not? And it goes off and fetches all that data. So that's brilliant. So that's um, very useful from that point of view um, using OData. So what we've just seen with the OData media types, the service document and the Atom pub responses, is how an agreement on the request and response format can be very useful, getting us data directly into Excel or into any other programs that support OData. But often API developers want to use other media types in fact, the client really wants to be in control of the media type that it's requesting. So if we take a look at this same service, this um, customer info, so is one of those entity sets in that service, and we make a simple request, you can see here I'm getting back JSON. If I change or remove this header here, change it to um, Atom plus XML, You can see I'm getting back an XML Atom Pub feed of that same service. So the client, through the accept header, can really be in control of the response that it receives. That gives rise to quite a few capabilities that might not be immediately obvious. And the one that we're most interested in is the, the documentation browsers, or the browsers that let us look through these APIs. So there are two included in the project by default. I'm going to show them to you now. If we go to the, the POM XML here in the in the Iris part of the project, and we have a look for user agent, you'll see these two dependencies here. An OData user agent and a HAL type user agent. Now these user agents, if I show them to you now, come with a kind of example or a browser that helps you look through that data in a slightly friendlier fashion than just one single response at a time. So I'm going to go to the OData one first. Let's explore a JSP. Now initially I get a couple of errors because I haven't given it the URL yet. Once I give it the URL of my service, you can see here it understands the service document. It understands how to render it and the fields that are available and I can look through it. I can start to use that data in an example. If I take a look at the HAL one now, the HAL one uses that same concept of you know, it requests the HAL plus JSON media type, but it also gives the ability to follow these links, to click through them. So I'm going to go to that one. Let's go to this one. I'll browser HTML. Okay, and I'll want to put that same root in. There we go. Right. So here's the service document. Here's the response on the right. I can click on customer infos, do a get, and I can see immediately the items 
I can see the response of each item and I can click through them and navigate through them. So I can go from this item down to the individual item and that's the response from individual item. So these types of browsers really help an API developer understand your API and get to grips with it. Because what they want to do is parse and understand these responses. And through these clients, they can start to understand how to do that. I think that's pretty powerful as a, um, a quick start for a developer. And the media types are really important when it comes to uh, people adopting your API. You know, if someone will want to use JSON or they'll want to use XML, that will be their preference. So thanks for watching. That's creating data services. And stay tuned for episode two.